in this segment, we're going to continue looking at lettering and this time we're going to look at how we can modify lettering objects using the reshape tool. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in over top of the lettering object that we first created and this was just used we used the free line to create this lettering object. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that object and then I'm going to choose reshape. So when you reshape lettering, there are several things that you're going to be able to do. And I guess one of the first things I'll show you, I need to turn Visualizer off to be able to show this. When Visualizer is turned off, you can see the trail threads. So for example, I think this is the first lettering object in the design. And so this is actually the showing the thread jumping from the center of the hoop up to where the embroidery starts. And so, as always with embroidery objects, the little green diamond represents where the embroidery starts sewing. And if I would rather have this lettering object um, start sewing over on this side of the A or something like that, I can move the starting point and it changes the first point of the lettering. And same thing with the exit point. If you needed to change where this embroidery, right now this embroidery finishes sewing here and jumps off to the next object, if I move the exit point to be wherever, just up here or something, then it'll change that as the last point of the embroidery. So you can, first of all, with reshape, control the start point and end point of your lettering objects. Now you'll notice that each letter has a little pink handle. And you can actually click on that handle and you can move the lettering along your baseline. So this is your ability to visually um, correct or adjust your letter spacing and this isn't um, super important with the A, B, C, D but what you'll find is sometimes you put letters together like the letter A uh, maybe beside something like the letter V where they both kind of have a slant and because the embroidery software kind of sees letters like boxes so it doesn't know to put less space between um, an A and a V than it does between an M and an N. Why don't I, just to demonstrate that, why don't I go ahead and create a new lettering object here. So we'll try and pick some letters that have sort of troubles in spacing like A and V and N and M and notice that rounded letters like O um, and, oh I don't know, D have a little bit less trouble with spacing because they don't have those long hard lines so for example now here's my new lettering object that I just created and what you can see is notice how much space there is between the A and the V compared to the V and the M and yet the M and the N look so close together and really in reality all of these letters have exactly the same amount of space between them if you could imagine drawing a box around the M it's easy because the box, the M pretty much fills the shape of its box. But if you drew the same box around the V, the line would come right down here and it would come right down here and you would have the same amount of space between the A and the V as you do between the M and the N. But visually, our eyes see that large space in between the A and the V and that's where choosing reshape gives you that ability to bring your A over a little bit closer to your V. And sometimes when you have two sort of hard letters like the M and the N, you might want to just move them away from each other to actually create a little bit additional space between those letters. And letters like O that are rounded on the sides, well, you can sometimes have a little bit less space between that letter and this next letter beside it because so little of this letter actually occupies the... The, the spacing, you know, like whereas the N and the M have a entire long satin column that sews right along the edge of the letter space versus the O which has really just a small section of the O that is right at the edge of that letter space. So that's the reason why we need to be able to adjust letter spacing which in um, some industries is known as kerning but we, we call it adjusting the letter spacing. So now other editing that we can do beyond just editing the letter spacing in here if I look closely. Um, for example, when I click on the letter A, notice that these other handles appeared and maybe if I turn my visualizer off it helps a little bit to see them. 
And I'll get really close to this letter A. Okay, so remember, when so these are the handles, and they're pink, but when you select them, they turn kind of like dark blue. So if I click on the V, the V becomes dark blue, and the A is no longer selected. Now when I select the A, here come the new little handles. So they're very small. There's one up here. This one will adjust your italics, so the slant. I can actually adjust. This is the ability to adjust the slant of just one letter. So see what I did there? I moved that A to have a backward slant. I also have the ability to adjust the size of just one letter, whether it be smaller or larger. And with the corner handle here, I can adjust the, that was stretching the letter. This is resizing the letter in proportion. So this will make it smaller or larger, but in proportion. So if I just zoom out, you can see that I've, even though it's still one lettering object that I can still select and move around, I was able to make a bunch of adjustments specifically to the letter A. So if I choose reshape and I click on the handle of the letter A, that's when all these other handles come in. So this was for slant, this one's for stretching, this one's for changing the size in proportion, this is also for stretching, so this one will make it skinnier. And I can use the handle to move the lettering along the baseline. Another thing that you can do is if I hold my control key down, I can actually move the lettering free floating to anywhere. So if I wanted to drop this letter below my baseline, I could do that. And now that I've let go of the handle and I've let go of the um, control key, if I click on it again, now I can slide it. Oops, I didn't mean to double click on it. I can slide it along my baseline again, but it's been dropped below the baseline. So I'm going to do that again. So let's take a look at the V and we'll just put it right here so you can see easily. So there's, when you select one letter, you get several new handles. One of them's for slant, one of them's to make it taller, um, smaller or shorter or taller in, but that's stretching versus the corner handle, which will make it taller or smaller in proportion and then a side handle to make it skinnier by stretching or squishing. And then finally, I can slide the letter along the baseline with the handle, or if I hold control down on my keyboard, so holding control on my keyboard, I can move that to letter to have any um, location I want to above or below my baseline. So maybe I'll put it above just to demonstrate that I can do that. Cool. So now we can take this even a step further. Um, for example, I'll click on the letter O. And now if I click on the actual outline of the letter O, it opens up all of the points that were used to digitize this letter O. And now I can actually reshape the letter O to take on, um, you know, a new and interesting shape that, you know, maybe, um, you're trying to match an embroidery font exactly or maybe you're just trying to make new and interesting looking letter shapes and so you can do that so that's called reshape lettering and again why don't I just start on this ABCD and just recap this again first of all I select the letters and when they're selected I've got the sizing handles to be able to resize them or squish them or if I click a second time, I get the open handles, which would enable me to either rotate my lettering or make slant on my lettering. If I change from the select tool to the reshape tool, I get the ability to, first of all, adjust the, the location of the baseline longer or shorter baseline. I can slide the letters along my baseline. When I select a letter, it gets handles that I can use to resize just one individual letter. And I can hold my control key down to move this letter above or below my baseline. So I can make it look something like this. Whoops. Move it up like that. 
And if I want to reshape the letters, I simply click on the outline right on the black wireframe of the artwork, of the art of the lettering, I mean. And that opens up for me all of the digitized points, and I can add new points by, oops, keep doing that touchy mouse. I can add new points to the shape by just clicking on the outline and adds a new set of nodes. Um, I can change the angle of the nodes. I can add new nodes. I can reshape the nodes, move them, so you have the ability to fully customize the lettering. Now let's take a look at, before I sort of recap, um, for example, um, this lettering here I created using the any shape baseline. So if I select that lettering and choose reshape, here you can see the baseline that I drew. And I would have the ability to change that baseline to be, whoa, any shape I want. Didn't mean to go quite that far over. And if I wanted to, I could add new points to the baseline. So here's one of the points that I had on my baseline. If I right click over top of my baseline, I can get a new point for the baseline and I can keep changing that the orientation of my any shape line and just like any other um, time I can move the letters along my line and if I want to I can go in and reshape the actual um, digitized points of those letters. Um, now for example with the letters that you create using a fixed line or a free line so why don't I just start a new lettering object and type in A, B, C, D um, and on a free line. So if we start out with a free line like this and then you decide later on that you'd like to have it be an any shape line, well you can do that. So first of all you would either come to the drop down menu and just change the orientation to be an any shape line or you could reopen up the object properties and change it on the lettering tab to be an any shape baseline. Either way, once you change it to be an any shape baseline, you still just have the baseline that the software created, which is going to have two points, but it gives me the ability to adjust more points to that baseline. So if I wanted to, um, I could, whoa, touchy mouse today. I could add points to my baseline. So if I right click on the baseline, I can add it which is an easy way to make an arc, by the way. I'm going to do that again. I've messed this up. So for example, A, B, C, D on an any shape baseline. Why don't we start with the free baseline? So we'll just put A, B, C, D on the free baseline. Then we take a little bit closer look and we choose to change it to an any shape baseline. And then we come in and we just right click on the center of the baseline and turn it into an arc. So there's lots of different ways that you can control these things. And for example, remember we created this lettering as a circle. We use the clockwise circle. Well, if I select that lettering and I have the reshape tool turned on, we get to see the entire circle and um, we can adjust our circle. So if I wanted to, I could adjust it bigger or smaller. I can use the center here to adjust the width of the circle and I can also use this little yellow handle at the end to create um, I guess a shorter or a longer line length so if I wanted to um, change my circle to be like an arc like this and I wanted to specifically use this to get um, you know a really specific arc so that's your baseline you have the ability with the reshape tool to modify your lettering to have pretty much any shape baseline that you want and of course we have the ability to adjust the lettering spacing by using these handles to adjust the letters along our baseline and we can reshape and size the individual letters using the handles we can change the digitized points of the letters by clicking on the shape of the letters so you can see here that they're really it's almost endless the type of modifications that you can make to your embroidery lettering whether it be moving the starting points or the exit points and yeah you can get perfect embroidery results using these reshape tools so that's um, a lot more about how to create lettering and choose the fonts and resize and reshape the lettering. And now what I'm going to do is come back and talk about creating monograms.